First person listening to the podcast is making out big this week. Attack left lane. Do you watch Supernatural? No. Hey, that was worth it and hilarious. Attack the Gold Fury. Our coach isn't going to be named Boo Boo whatever the fuck it is. Group up. Big old steaming pile number two. Now you know how good Smite thinks you are. Oh, you're fuzzy woozy. Let's not hurt them too bad. Let's make them scream! You gotta get your priorities straight, Beagle. Ouch! How rude! Split push! Howdy, folks. Take two. Welcome to episode 37 of Split Push. We know what we're doing. We've only been doing this for 38 weeks now because we took a week off. I call bullshit. I have no idea what I'm doing. We're getting there, folks. We're getting there, you know. Yes. So, along with me today, as usual, is Yuki. Yeah, what's up? And Beagle. Hi. And then Dan. Hello. And Guy. Hey, this dead old lady is risen. (laughs) Yep. She's floating with her balloons down to find her husband in South America somewhere. Someone capriolted Guy. What can yep. we say? Yeah. The but most importantly, but most importantly today, folks, we have a special guest with us. You might see her streaming some smite. You might see her on Twitter. She, she's pretty active over there, too. It is the one and only Lermy Wormy. How are you doing today? I'm great. You know, it's really awesome that you guys are out here doing this for so long. Uh, I feel like there's a pretty, pretty big hole sometimes in the community where people kind of don't really make content, so I'm really glad that you guys are out here doing what you're doing, because it's really awesome. Yeah, it is. Yeah, I, my cat's got a poof ball time. again, Most so I will do my best to edit that out, folks. But he's having, he <laughs> seems to be frisky. Like, oh, they're doing the podcast. Mom's got me poof balls again, so. Yeah. Yeah, he ran upstairs. He's your problem now, Dan. Oh, <laughs> it's still your problem to edit. Yes, it's still actually my anyway, problem. Anyway, it's still really your problem. So. <laughs> it's really your problem. Mm-hmm. Oh my! So hey, be- before we get into the thick of it tonight, before we get into the thick of it tonight, I mean thick of it, I got something I want to throw out there, and this is a code for an Izanami Shadow Stalker skin. Ooh. So grab Ooh. your pens and your pencils. Picture Not page, you, Dan. Picture pages. Oh, I w- okay, I will. I already no, have. I already have it. I already <laughs> have it. <laughs> so hey, listen up. It is. W as in Walter, W as in Walter, S as in Sam, S as in Sam, 68266, A as in Apple, 1290102. So again, that's WWSS68266A, 1290102 for your very own Shadow Stalker Izanami skin. First come, first serve, one per platform. High five. All and right. if you enter the code in backwards, you get donuts. Shit, damn. Ooh, I'm going for the donuts. I uh, know. Wait, are they jelly-filled or cream-filled? They're lemon-filled, uh, the superior donut. Oh, uh, all right, never mind. <laughs> I'm still going for the donuts. <laughs> so, hey, Lermy, um, before we get into the rest of the thicket here, why don't you uh, tell the folks out there in the old Smite podcast world a little bit about yourself, you know? Where you come from, who you are, what you do with Smite, who your favorite uncle is, and how many lifetime <laughs> pets you've had. All right, well, uh, where do I even start, really? I've been playing Smite for almost five years. I think I started back in um, June of 2014, I think it is at this point. Um, I, I pretty much started when ROM came out, and I've been doing so many different things, I guess, through my time in Smite. At first, probably the first two or so years, I was kind of like, Doing my own thing, casuals, only playing Artemis for 200 games in a row. You know, that that was me. Um, <laughs> Hell yeah. But at the start of, actually at the end of Season 2, there was the World Championship, of course. So me, being the casual player that I was, I heard that they were giving away codes. And I was like, yo, I want me some free things. So that actually ended up getting me into Twitter, which then got me into the pro scene. And then I was like, wait, they're doing this pro scene thing, like, all the time? So, going into Season 3, I watched every single game of the SPL there was. Back then, they had a chatbot, and I was number two in the chatbot right behind Peckies. Um, and it was just, like, such an experience to finally, like, have that transition from 
you know, just being really interested in the casual scene to being interested in doing sort of everything. So since then, I've played, I've coached, I've streamed, I've written for esports orgs, I've casted, I've designed. Um, just to name a couple of things off the top, uh, I wrote for Obey Alliance and Team Dignitas. I am level 160 in Smite. I am Masters Rank Conquest. I have 74 diamonds. Competitively, I played in the ABGL, which was the college league. It's not the college league anymore, but that was back in 2017 with Penn State. Um, and then after that, I transitioned to coaching. And last spring, I was with We Garden Servo, which was an oceanic team that actually made the spring Masters land. I casted for Smite Prime, which is an amazing org. You all should check them out. They have some really good uh, tournaments on all sorts of platforms. Um, they're even going into Paladin soon, so that's pretty cool. Jethens is an awesome guy. Uh, right now, I am the Oceanic um, Tournament Director for Volpus Esports, so I um, organize all of the Oceanic tournaments for them. And I also was an admin for Tier Monster in the Challenger Cup. Uh, I guess the last thing I can talk about is that I'm a Twitch affiliate, so I have a stream on Twitch, and now that my semester is over from college, I am able to stream more, and that's pretty much everything that I do. It kind of was a lot, but it, five years is a long time to do things, it's fine. Yeah. Jeez, I guess, man. What have you guys been doing this whole time? Um, oh, feeding. Lord. Making cookies. Yeah, I'm going to go with feeding and being out of the house. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, all, all of those are good options, you know, to, to get to get to like doing anything in Smite, you have to feed in a couple games first. Yeah, Dad, you'll get to that gold one day. <laughs> Damn. <Yeah. laughs> Still stuck in that joust hell. I tried taking uh, Beagle in with me this week. How'd that work out for us? Oh, that did not sound like a good right. idea. I want to talk about it. Dude, we had this Changa. Dude, she was like account level 40. I'm like... <laughs> What the hell? I'm like 130 almost, and you're pairing me up with an account level 40. And now you know how good Smite thinks you are. Oh, goodness. <laughs> I, like, I can only I carry so much. Actually, it was a 2 on 3 most of the game. She thought her job was to stand back behind us and heal. And, and I'm like, no, no, no. And like, sometimes. you're not even healing. Like, no, she, sometimes. she'll heal when we don't need it. And then. <laughs> I need it. Oh, and thank God, Shanga healed me. Yeah, that's just that's just ranked all <laughs> around. Much. Like yeah. it was so. Just but you want to know what their team was? What was the first one? Uh, Cerberus, Zeus, Medusa. Oh gosh. Yeah. Ooh. Dude, what was the second you just, one? You cannot band out all of the badness that there is in Joust right now. Absolutely, you just not. can't. But then the next game, I thought we were going against the same people because they banned. Aries and Hu Yi, Dad played Aries, I played Hu Yi, and I was like, are you serious? She was like, guaranteed it's the same people. I'm sitting no, there no, screaming, oh, if it's the same people, I swear. <laughs> That's a good team setup. Medusa's yeah. really good in Giles. Yeah, oh, she definitely yeah. is. I know, I've noticed. And then they played Medusa again, I think, right? I think uh, Medusa I is worse than yeah. I think she is. Yeah, so I, there was a Medusa in the next Unpopular opinion. Well, it's not that she's, like, outstandingly good. Um, if you're halfway decent with her, the the burst she has, cause she, because of her one, she can she can build the damage build, like, mm -hmm. the, the damage CDR build. Um, but she gets, with, like, an Odysseus bow or something, she gets so much attack speed late game off of her one that you're really... As Medusa, it's smart to only look for one target. You're not trying to go and mow the entire team team down. You're trying to just blow somebody the hell up, and she'll do it very effectively. Being good with the spit allows you to get mm -hmm. additional damage or kills. Like a lot of the double or triple kills with Medusa are going to come from, you know, the fight happens. You will use your kit, dash in, hit your two off like the one remaining minion. And that, because of the dash and clipping off that minion, you get the range you needed off the two to kill the person. It's yeah, she, she's she's kind of got that like she's not hard to play, but she has a high skill cap to play her just right. Yeah, I like to call her Baby's First Pen God because a lot of um a lot of <laughs> hunters that I see playing um whether it be in Joust or in Conquest like always love to go for the crit build regardless of who they're against. Yeah. But really, Medusa is is like the one key hunter that if if you build power, it works out. And a lot of people have realized that. And you know, building her crit 
has kind of been, you know, the second thought rather than the first thought. And that's like when you're going into higher level play and you're going against people that are going to counterpick you in Conquest, for instance, being able to switch between those two builds is such a good mindset to have that that character is so good at um, like starting someone off at learning to mess around with builds. Yeah, because yeah. she's, she's one of the only like three hunters that I would say I would regularly build almost no attack speed on. There's a few others that get away with it okay. Um, she is pretty versatile, I, and I like that about her, too. It's, you can you can do different things with her, you know I mean? If you're up against a bunch of squishies that don't know how to do anything, you know, and are building all offense, well, you know, maybe a little crit can be fun, but I've done it. It was pretty nasty, but, you know, not something I would normally do with her. Yeah, that and her um, ult gives you a pretty long CC immunity, which is always yeah. really nice. I just think her ult is, like, garbage at higher levels, because then everyone just turns around and laughs at you and you die. It can be, mm -hmm. for sure. But there are certain scenarios where it will work out really nice to say, like, you're on Bull Demon and they're going to come through. Well, they're either going to have to fight you on the Bull Demon, which you could secure with your ultimate, or you could catch them off guard while they're coming in, and then they're looking at you and they can't really do anything about it because they have to go that way to get to you. My, so, my favorite yeah. is when there's an Ares on the enemy team and he alts, and I'm like, I don't care if you get me. As a matter of fact, I hope you do, and I hope the enemy team's like, oh, look, he's got a bunch of people, let's go! And I'm like, alt team through him to get all of them. That that I've had some fun times yeah, with that. I th like, I think Ares is like, where was my follow-up? I'm like, <laughs> they're all statues. Yeah, I think a lot of people try too hard to use her CC, her ult for the setup. It's so good as a counter because of the, again, because of that large immunity that a lot of times if you're, if you just, if you're ulting for the CC immunity, you'll end up, you know, put, it'll end up putting in work for you and setting up for the counter. Yeah. So some other games this week, but Yuki speaking of getting out of gold, well, I didn't get out of gold, but I got out of bronze <laughs> with Duel. Now, now, you know, <laughs> hey, Damn, uh, hey. I'm, I'm calling it what it is. I have only really just begun Duel. to learn how to play Duel. So, you know, not a big deal. <laughs> I don't care that I started in bronze. I'm actually kind of glad, you know, it helps me learn how to get through and makes me have to actually work for it. Uh, but I got through duel with a couple, a pair of chalk wins over, uh, Kukulain and, uh, a Kronos, actually. I went four and oh against both of them. Yeah. I like chalk and duel. He's really fun. I think I am 10 and five with him now, uh, over the last couple weeks. And also have him at Platinum. So I'm pretty happy about that. But there was one game I wanted to bring up that we had this week that we just... I didn't even realize how good we were doing. But it was all five of us yesterday against a mm. team full of warriors in Arena. I was raw. And... <laughs> I had to look this stat up because I, I, I said at one point, I'm like, I don't know that I only got attacked once when Bologna audited in on me once. That was the only time I think I was attacked. And I forgot to look at the stats, which I just now pulled up on Smite Guru. So we kicked their ass. 293 tickets left for us. They, they gave up at 18. They just, you know, couldn't wait a few more seconds. Damage taken. Now, Dirtnap Dan was playing King Arthur. He, you know, just kind of give you, he was our frontline guy, so he took almost 20,000, right? Then you have Guy and playing Daji, Beagle playing Artemis. They're both in the 9,000 range. Yuki playing Baron at uh, just under 8,000. Me playing Ra, 1,500 damage taken. <laughs> they just never got to me. Just You're welcome. Never. It was right. just. <laughs> that's both such games, a fun match both games I played Artemis recently I did so good it wasn't even funny it was so yeah you were 11 0 and 25 mm, in that match funny, like, I was pulling them out of their fountain with my old <laughs> yeah. I was on the phone with my cousin and also standing in the middle of five people and not dying yeah like he would stay up there as King Arthur while we all backed and then came back and it's just like yeah, like Dan was smart. He built some physical defenses first, you know. <laughs> yeah, I was co I remember coordinating with Beagle. I'm like Beagle, walk towards somebody and all she'd all I'd okay. Baron all Dodgy all would go off. Like they'd start moving, get pulled somewhere else, start moving again, get pulled to the palau, start moving again and die. 
And I'll tell you what, the raw snipes in the beginning of the match weren't quite there. I was over anticipating a little too much, and I've been actually working on that. People are not as smart as I'm giving them credit for, and I'm starting to play them more like the skill I'm seeing, and I'm, and I'm doing a little better with that. But, oh, the, the, the raw snipes came on. Oh, there is nothing more satisfying than sniping people with raw, especially when you, they think they got away. And in a flash, they're gone. Oh, nothing better than that. Nothing better than that. Dude, we had some, we had some, some good times there. What was the other match we had? Because people were just getting pushed and pulled everywhere. Was it that match? That was that. Yeah, yeah, that yeah. Was that match. Yeah, I think it was you had assault Baron too. And guy. Yeah, yeah, and assault. Mm-hmm. Yeah, then yeah. we played that assault. That was pretty nasty. Dan was, uh, Dan was playing Cronus. Dan. <laughs> I'm gonna kill. I, I need to die. I'm like, all right, you go go one one v five. We'll fall back. How many kills did you get out of that, Dan? <laughs> uh one. But there was like two people at zero health that my ability didn't go off before I died. That would have killed them both. Uh it was just funny. excuses. Yeah, <laughs> excuses. <laughs> that was another one we were playing because uh, I was playing. I got Daji again. I got Baron, and you had. Uh, I had Nike. Yes. Yeah, mm-hmm. I remember because Nike's jump without the without the two active takes so long to go off and makes it a pain in the butt to you know land. He, I'd see I'd see the Chrono stun hit somebody. I'm like I'm gonna leap on them, and just about the time the stun's over, I'm finally making my way th- through the air, knocking him up to see him die. That poor <laughs> Ymir, I don't know how many times he got knocked up right after the stun. <laughs> yeah, he kept uh, laughing at me. So oh, I he gave up. He sold all of his him. items. I That's know. right. At the end of the game, he did. He stole all of his items. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's been, how you like, win. Laughing, spam That's laughing the at me whenever he'd freeze me or something. Yeah. And I'm like, yeah, but you're still gonna die. Well, maybe if and, he'd been more busy playing the game instead of spam laughing, like they had and, a good team. I mean, I think they had. A, I still think they had a better team than we did. Yeah, uh, actually, I thought we were in trouble. Oh, that um, your your heels is because Baron's not yes. a healer. He can show Baron, up in any game. Uh, hey, High Res, Titan Forge, I mean, anybody listening that, that has anything to do that can get this decision in there, you need to rework how uh, Assault views healers. Because I healed for 16k in 18 minutes. Yeah, just saying. And a little much. I already had, you know, I started with Chronos Pendant. And I died twice. I picked up boots, uh, cooldown boots the first time and ass claps the second time. And yeah. Meow. Stupid cat. Yeah. Made me look bad. But uh yeah, we do we had some we had some some good games in there, man. I'll tell you what. I, I even I even played Nija this week and was hit my alt. I'm like hit the right button this time. I'm like, After like a year of me trying to teach him how to fucking do it. Yeah, <laughs> you know, playing him once every three months doesn't help, so yeah. but Yeah, but it's literally the easiest alt in the game. Ooh, I don't know about that. <laughs> no, once you hit them, it's the easiest. Mm. Once they're already in the air, mm. all terror, you have to do is ult. hit a button. Terror ult either. when it tells you to hit a uh, button. Buller ult, by the way. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, okay. Ult. Well, yeah, ult ult's pretty ult's pretty easy. Pretty easy. Right. I just hit it. And yeah, terror up watch. Just but like hit triangle. They're in the air. Here. They can't fight back. They can't beat. They can't do anything. All I you th- gotta do is when it says hit, you hit. Right. Uh, yeah. And for a year, I'm trying to teach him. When it says hit, you hit. And like, you just it's not even like a timing thing. Like once it lights up, you got a few seconds. Yeah. yeah. It was just one of those things where, you know, it's like, what button do you hit? <laughs> and two games ago <laughs> I was hitting the X button. Like, why the hell ain't this working? Oh. I realized after the game I'm like, you know, dumbass, I looked down at the control, I'm like and immediately I'm like, hey dumbass. You were hitting the X button. I'm like, that has nothing to do with his alt. I'm like, hey, 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 good one. Y'all now see what I deal with. <laughs> I'm old. Let me alone. I'm allowed to have senior That's moments. Just <laughs> That's a senior year. I am halfway yeah. to 84. I'm halfway so. to 30. <laughs> so how have your games been this week, Larmy? Oh, you know, I I actually have been having some okay games. You know, I've been trying out Arthur. I'm the kind of person that gets a god diamond as soon as they come out. So Hera's diamond, Pele's diamond, Baron's <laughs> diamond, all all of them. Uh, you know, so I've I've been playing Arthur a lot, and like I gotta say, people think he's good, but I'm kind of on the fence about that. I th- I think his auto hurt you. more hurt 
the hurt you as the player more than people think. I think he's a feeding machine. Absolutely. I think I, think I kind of damage. agree, although I've done very well as him. Myself, I think he's a feed machine. He's yeah, just I'm, so difficult. I'm not scared of him yet. I'll put that out there. You know, like <laughs> I'm still scared of Hera half the time. Oh, I'm still scared of Baron while. half the time. Very. A good Pele, uh, you know, a decent Pele I'm scared <laughs> no, of. No, a bad Pele yeah. you should be scared of. Yeah, yeah. Eh, not quite, but, you yeah, know. I would yeah, I would <laughs> yeah. yeah, you get the point. Yeah, I don't know how I feel about him. His numbers are high. I think, I also think people are trying too much to build him, like, bruisery jungle. I think his ability to stay on someone and stay in a fight, it'll, it'll be interesting to see what happens, but, like, how do you, how do you, how do you buff him? Like, you don't want to just buff his damage numbers. I don't think you can. I think the only thing you really have to do is I think you got to change his combo three to be able to be cancelable. And then he'll feel so much better. Yeah. I agree with that. I, that is I hate weird. that ability. I think every auto attack, having that dash, um, could go away. Like, the first one in the in the hit chain could be a dash or something <laughs> like that, because... One boxing him is a pain in the ass because he's always dashing. Um, when the day he came out on console, me and Dan were were in a practice, and as a hunter, it was so hard. Like, and not like in a oh, you know, hard way. It was just it was hard because he would he would auto attack and then du- just uh, dash out of the the basic and. I mean, everything being a dash is just, I think it hurts him a little bit. Like, it makes it hard to clear wave, hitting towers. I think the dash is the most annoying thing I've ever experienced. (laughs) And I can't tell you how many times that I just glitch in place and miss my basic anyway instead. (laughs) So, that doesn't help. (laughs) When you ulted the the other Arthur in that arena and he's on the ground taking damage but you're in the air. Yeah, anyway. Oh my god. What's up with the, the, the glitch where people are running funny? <laughs> oh my god. Oh, yeah. yeah. People are like, that turbo that yesterday. I don't want that to go away. Have I you seen that, Larry? I like it. It's funny. No, what are y'all, what are y'all talking about? So, so, someone will, like on the enemy team w- won't be moving fast or anything, but they'll be at like four times animation speed. Oh, yeah. So their legs are just going a thousand Athena miles an hour. that I've seen do it. I think it's like literally only Athena. No, I seen I no. seen, no, uh, I seen uh, the Arthur on the other team. Yeah, that yeah. same match. Oh, okay, okay. It's hilarious though. Their legs look like they're they're it's... just fucking, and they're there. almost kind of high stepping a little bit too. <laughs> <laughs> they're goose stepping. <laughs> is it like fast it looks like they're running, but not? <laughs> they're changing direction quickly, or is it just like no? no. no like no. literally, their legs while they're running will go at like twice the normal <laughs> speed. Not even. So, so it looks like they're like same speed. They're, it looks like they're on a treadmill full full boat, <laughs> but they're just going the normal speed, and yeah. it's hilarious. Can't say I've seen that, but sounds interesting. <laughs> Yeah. And all their uh, animations go fast. So what level too, did you so, get your yeah. What level did you get your Arthur up to so far? I'm two. I'm like almost <laughs> at three. I'm at two thirty nine <laughs> out of two sixty, and I'm just kind of like dreading playing him more because he's just not fun. <laughs> well, hey, at least it's a double everything weekend here. Up, oh, up. Oh, by the time y'all listen to this, it's already over. So sorry about that. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, that, yeah, I those are the things that, that I live for. Like, when, when I I was just on vacation, right? And so literally the day before I was going to go on vacation, they had a triple everything weekend, and I was yep. like, you're kidding me. Oh, my God. Every time I would actually have plans for once, it's like, hey, triple worship or, or triple everything weekend. It's like, gee, thanks. <laughs> hey, I'm going out of town. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to Harvey's house for <laughs> once. Oh, but I miss triple freaking everything. you got to get your priorities straight, Beagle. Ah, oh, sorry. I'm you can tell Harley to sit on it and wait a weekend because it's triple, baby. You're telling me. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I man. I just grind diamonds till they're done, then I don't play them anymore. <laughs> See, I, I'm the opposite. When a new guy comes out, I don't even care about. Him. I I don't touch them because I figure, you know what? They're gonna come out. They'll get you know this massive amount of play time by everybody. Then they're gonna get tweaked and changed. And then maybe, you know, everyone play them some more, and then maybe even a, a secondary round of tweaks and changes. Not always, but I usually wait till like, all right, there's been like a patch or two in a row that they haven't changed them. Now I'll start playing them, because I'm kind of, yeah, I'm old. I, I can't relearn the same god three times. Just one, <laughs> once and done. 
<laughs> he can't even learn one god once. Yeah, right? <laughs> anyway. Well, it depends. It depends. You guys are so mean tonight. They're always mean They're to me. They're sad. Come on. <laughs> Man. Man. What they is are. Anyone here Howdy, not? folks. Dirt Nap's Gold Savage here. <laughs> yeah, you just wait, Yuki. You just wait. That's all I gotta say. You I'm just waiting. Wait. One yeah, day, please, one do. day. I'm old. It takes me some time. Might be 20 years down the road, but one day. One day, I will be platinum. Oh, look, guys, join in the crowd now. <laughs> <laughs> oh, on well, I'm like only a few, I'm only a few years nice behind people, of my age. Hey, guy, how, how's being number two feel? Oh, man, don't even. Yes. I had it in the bag, too, if I wasn't lagging. So you get first so how do people even, how do people play when they lag? How do you play when you lag? I see people <laughs> lag all the time. 90% they play. of times when other people lag, it ends up working out for them. So. Oh, that's the worst. I play two games on the hotel internet. And I'm like, oh, yeah, this shit is working good. Can't really. Let me get into a ranked game. <laughs> as soon as the game starts, I'm just lagging everywhere. So I'm like, oh, no. All I gotta do is win this one game, and I'm the number one op wash. Oh no, that didn't happen. Still number two. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm. Actually, Big old bad. steaming pile number two. I'm Thanks. so blessed to have great internet. I I have good enough internet that I can play on a U service with under 100 ping. So it's mm. actually just like an amazing feeling to be able to play with some of the people that I, I've met um, on the U, and even on OCE when I used to coach. Uh, and on, on OCE, I would play with them <laughs> sometimes. Um, and playing with 300 ping is an experience. Uh, let me tell you, things don't ever line up where they're supposed to be. So say you're autoing, you gotta, you gotta account for the fact that you're gonna auto two seconds later <laughs> than you intend to. <laughs> and it's an adjustment. I have, I have to play with my, uh, cord plugged into my PlayStation now. If I don't, I lag out of every game. I always, I'm yeah. in and out. Like, well, I you're, cannot. She's two floors away from the Wi-Fi, and we're in a townhouse, so, you know, there's Wi-Fi on either side of us. Yeah, because yeah, for you some got, reason she's we got decided to, to put it in the basement. Is. Yeah, I have amazing internet at home, but yeah, the hotel internet was not friendly to me that night. I still don't understand why it had to be in the basement. I don't know. It's just where it ended up, and then when the cable company ran a dedicated line for it, that's where it was, so that's where it's staying now. <laughs> yeah, I feel that entirely, because that's how it is in my house as well, and so I came home from college like two weeks ago, and so I brought my whole setup home, and it's it's so complicated with the PC, because I've got like this huge like PC, and then I've got my two monitors, yeah. and i got my keyboard and stuff like that, so I live on the top floor of my house, but the, the router is on the bottom floor. So I lugged all of my stuff up to my room, got it all set up nice and pretty, had like, I brought up a desk too and I brought up a chair, and then I realized, there's no Ethernet port in my room. <laughs> so I'm sitting there looking like a dumbass with all my stuff in my room, like, Dad, can you run a 200 foot Ethernet cord, please? You need to get a, a power over ground adapter. So what happened? Did you pack all your stuff down in the basement? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> The only reason I have mine is because my computer has to be hardwired, so. Yeah, yeah hers doesn't have a Wi Fi card. Yeah, yeah neither does mine. My computer is, <laughs> and crap. It was Dan's old one. Well, if you, if you find that situation come up more, more often than not, uh, investing in a power overground adapter will save your butt. Yeah, I, I just recently heard about that, and I, I didn't know those even existed before, and so I might actually do that, but I think my first purchase has to be an SSD, because right now, my mm. hard drives are not looking too hot. Oh, you want to talk about <laughs> hard drives? My computer died a while back because the hard drive oh, no. I was using in it was 12 years old. Oh, my God. <laughs> I just Every time I got a new computer or built a new computer, I just took my hard drive with me. It finally mm -hmm. died. It had like 7.2 million rewrites on the drive. So. Jeez. I thought oh, I had to break down and buy a new buy a new hard drives or new hard drives, I should say. Mine can hold the Library of Congress three times. Yay! Yeah. Yeah, I don't know. I got like 180 hours of record time here left, or something like that. Oh, I got like 700. Oh, what do oh, I 90. have? Oh, I have 90. 470 hours after. Uh, still after 38 weeks. <laughs> I have so 691 I hours. I only have a few hours because my hard drive died. Damn. <laughs> All right. Well, let's get moving on before Yuki runs out of space. I'll tell you what. So, hey, uh, something exciting happened. Wait, 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 wait
Here Wait, we you go. Didn't, you didn't let me say my games of the week. I actually just oh, stopped. Oh, stopped damn. Away. She caught me. I was trying to scoot past. <laughs> no, you, 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 you just don't want to fight me. That's all. I, I like played some. I played some duel today, and I did very good. And I played a person that I hate, but only because it's duel, and it works. <laughs> yeah, I'll tell you what. I, she's like, guess who I played. I never would have guessed. It would have taken me 98 guesses probably to get there. <laughs> Maybe 99. I played Apollo, and Ooh. I kicked those poor uh, who Five you foot hells, four but, asses. Like, dude, it was actually hilarious. I mean, I the first game I played against the Hu Yi, and I was like, all right, at least it's not like a tank, so this should be easy. And I mean, I won, but I only killed him once at the very end of the game because he just kept jumping out of everything. He always had his jump. But I always got him down like, 1 HP, and then he would jump away. It's like, oh, whatever. I kept, st I got red the entire time. I stole with blue. I had minis. I had my blue. I got <sighs> blue demon once. You're it boring was, guy. It, <laughs> it was so much fun. That was my he surrendered. Deal. That was my he he surrendered, he but I asleep. killed him because I was about to kill Titan, too. And then my second game, I played against the hell. I forgot to ban her. I was like, are you serious? Oh, this is going to suck. But what you know what? Hell? I got this. I got this. <laughs> and I went 4-0. and oh. She was so horrible. Every time she... She only got close to killing me, like, once. And it was... She tried to horrific me, but little did she know, I bought Sprint. <laughs> so, How close are you to placing? Like, um... Eight more games? Well, <laughs> Nine more games. Yeah. Mm. <laughs> I just want to see but, how high you place. Um, you pass it's bad. Just, the way I ended the game made me really happy, I guess. <laughs> I don't know. I thought it was funny. Um, I did, like, she was just about to come up. I just got her Phoenix. I was like, all right, I have a plan. My alt's going to be up in, like, 30 seconds. So I get the Titan down to half HP, and when I get back up, I immediately ult as she's trying to push, like, my Phoenix. And I kill the, and she sees me flying above her, and so she tries to come stop me. But just as she gets there, I killed the Titan and won. Jerk. Sweet. <laughs> I was, <laughs> I felt so mean, but I loved it. You backdooring wussy bag. <laughs> I could have gone and killed her again, but I felt bad for her. It's she was dual. And four. All's, all's fair and fun, and, you know, and love and war, right? Should have banned nope, Apollo. Not even Rexy will backdoor, man. Honestly, <laughs> I didn't even like. I only played Apollo because I was just like, I don't know. He has a he has an alt that might be helpful, and I just ended up doing really good with him. Uh, speaking like, of okay. duel, though, who was it? Uh, hold on, let me pull it up here in the Discord. Yeah, Kilowatt Man posted in the in oh. the. In oh, the, I was gonna uh, mention this too. Yeah, Humber the Discord Mom. today that Paul. Yeah, we've had him on the show before here. Posted his, uh, showed his dual rank leaderboard for Vulcan. He is 85 and 0. I'm like, damn. Well, Vulcan is the, um, biggest <coughs> pussy in the world. So Thank you for saying I can that. understand it. <laughs> Man, what oh, you oh, it's a beast. It's a big deal. You can hide behind your turret. <laughs> Yeah, whenever I play Duel, I ban Vulcan because I get tired of watching him walk away because his turret's in the way, and <laughs> I could easily kill him, but, you know, why take half my health from the turret and then just get 3 one and die? Because all he ever does is run away. I've never fought a Vulcan one time that wasn't the biggest wuss bag ever. Well, I'll tell you what, just play Chalk and you don't care because you, the turret's always destroyed. I, I don't. I, I play don't... fun people like Uller. Uller, ooh. <laughs> See? See how fun he is? I play hell, so I can't even talk. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm a diamond Uller in duel, so I like I'm a it. diamond I like Baron. <laughs> I, I've only played duel like twice before. I lost both games. And then I was like, alright, Dad said I should play more, and I have been I played some matches with my little brother and kicked his butt, because he don't really know how to play anymore. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I've got a couple stars on Vulcan, but I can't remember. God, you better not. I believe I do have a star or two on Vulcan, but I can't remember quite. You better not. Quite. 
Oh I will dishonor God. you. I don't think you do. Like, I don't think what, you do. What Maybe what diamond gods know. do you not have stars on? I don't know. Yeah, he's too humble to know that, really. Outside of Apple yeah. Watch. <laughs> we don't yeah, even do his games of the week we anymore. Have any uh... <laughs> hey, he had his moment. He had his moment. So, speaking of which, his I know... His best games been... of the week was last week. Yeah, honestly. <laughs> 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 but uh, anybody else got anything else to throw out here for your games of the week before we move on? Uh, we didn't do mine, but we kind of already talked about my good games and my bad games I don't want to talk about. So, All yeah, right. I'm good. I did have a ranked game, actually. It was a... Uh... Whoa, 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 what? <laughs> whoa, yeah, yeah, yeah. What? I had a ranked game where the first three people picked Ravana Solo... Fenrir support and Arachne jungle, and I'm thinking, God, great! And the other guy got the mid roll, and I'm like, shit. So I'm carry. <laughs> he picked up. He picked raw mid, and I ended up. I said, fuck it. I went op wash carry, and like we destroyed this oh, team. Geez. Destroyed them. They quit in ten minutes. They were like, fuck it. We don't even want to play you no more. <laughs> this shit is no fun. But I, yeah, that was my game of the week. There you go. That's that's my game. Game. I, I wrote that, it down. And everything. <laughs> All right, so uh, what I wanted to bring up next here is uh, something that Smite or Titan Forge is doing this year, something new called the Olympians. So uh, as of today, when we're recording this, voting for the Olympians has begun. So uh, basically what the Olympians is, it's a player advoc advocacy Advocate. I don't know how to say that word. Anybody? Anybody? Advocacy. Thank Advocacy. you. Yes. <laughs> Group consisting of players elected by y'all, the Smite Game community, to help provide a continuous feedback from y'all through us to Titan Forge. Help, you know, kind of bridge that gap between player and y'all company. So I kind of forgot that I had, you know, applied for this you know and uh, a couple days ago i get this email from uh titan forge isaiah it says hey congratulations you have been selected to be one of the people that will be available for the vote here this friday i'm like mm -hmm. well that's awesome so not and guess what not only am i on this list but somebody else here with us tonight is also on this list isn't that right Lermy wormy Yes, it is. It is actually such an honor, though, because I I honestly didn't expect my to see myself on this list, especially considering some of the the big names that I heard that had actually signed up for this list. And you know, pe people kind of got uh, in a tizzy about it, but you know, I I'm still very grateful that Titan Forge is doing this to begin with, and I think that this is like a super amazing idea. Yeah, I, I wholeheartedly agree. I would, I, I would, honestly, this is, this is my full boat here. I would love to win this and be a part of this because I've been gaming since literally like four years old and on my very first console playing some Odyssey and these little, you know, two bit, you know, video games. I used to play sick, you know, hooky in kindergarten so I could stay home and play video games. All right. <laughs> so long time all? gamer here. All right. I have, notebooks of stats from football games, war games, you name it. I, I still got notebooks of, of crap from when I played because I'm that, uh, as my wife would like to say, dirt, good old Dirt Naps mom, I'm a nerd. So yes, nerd. I do. I dive into this stuff. And when it comes to a game, uh, ever since EverQuest came out, I realized that I will dive into a game for years and years and just dedicate my gaming tenacity to getting better at the game, to learning the game, learning how it works, learning why things are the way that they are. I ran a family guild uh, in EverQuest, and everyone's like, oh, you know, if you're not going to set up with a raid style, you're never going to be able to do any progression. We progressed. No problem. It, it, you know, it was amazing. And I was like, I was this very savvy recruiter because I just wanted to find people that, like, look, I'm going to play when I play. If I'm on when we can do something, that's great. But if I'm not going to be held, you know, to my putting shit on my calendar, you know, type style. 
And, but, you know, learn how to play the game right. And that's who I would recruit into our guild and just no ifs, ands, or buts. After EverQuest eventually died, I, I moved on to World of Warcraft. And, well, you know, for the Horde, high five. But got hmm. into, uh, that's where I actually first got into PvP. And, oh, man, I'll tell you what. Me and, me and my, my clan there, Panty Raiders. Just people feared us. If we got into a battleground and you looked at the list of who you were against, we, our reputation preceded us. People just knew that if this wasn't going to go well. I mean, we had such great times and beat the snot out of a lot of good people. You know, great moments throughout the game. But again, you know, I mean, ask Dan, you know, I mean, that, that's where he, he's, he played some of requests with us, but really got into WoW and then, you know, really just dove in deep, learning how to play the game right. We used to play it brokenly. Like, you know, we would go into the dungeons of Norath and I would tank as a, a as a warlock, you know. Did you just say like Dungeons that. of Norath again? He did. I say did. Dungeons I went back. That was a great back. expansion, though. Yeah, <laughs> I went back, back a game. Never mind. Not Norath, please. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> what else? Not Dungeons of Warcraft. Norad. I went back to EverQuest. I told you I'm old. I have seen your moments. Yeah, but Dungeons anyway, Norath was the shit. Don't be bagging on that. Yeah, they were. Even then, though, actually. I would tank as a as a monk. Dirtnap's mom uh, was a necromancer, and Dan was a ranger. Yeah, we've been a, a family of gamers for a long time. But anyway, my point being is, I dive into these things and learn. And you know, regardless of whether or not I win here, which I honestly don't have any huge hopes of winning, but would love to. But regardless, I'm just happy that they're doing it because I think it's an awesome way to bridge between community and company. And, you know, even if I lose, I still get to do this podcast, which is already, you know, a part of building that bridge uh, between the community and the company and the game and helping make Smite better for all of us. So I'm happy to do whatever I can to make this better. And if y'all choose to vote for myself and or our guest here, Lermy Wormy, we would appreciate that. And we will dedicate ourselves even more to the game and help, again, make things better. So, get out there and vote. That's what I'm saying. Anything, anything you want to say, Larry? Um, well, I, I mean, it is, it is such a great opportunity, and like Dad was saying, it's just like we want to make the game better. We all love the game. It's just about who you want to represent your ideals, right? So it's not necessarily pop a popularity contest. I think a lot of people are just voting for who they know since some of these names don't necessarily you know ring true to them but like it's really about who's going to represent you and whoever you feel like is going to do that the best you should vote for and i'm not trying to say you know that if you like someone you shouldn't vote for them but it's it's really about getting getting that bridge across who is going to make the most efficient case for what you want to titan forge yeah definitely you know and again you know i just i just think it's awesome i, I really do I, I you know I think it's a great opportunity for a lot of people. I mean, there's a lot of names on here. People, I, I have no idea who half of these are. And then the other half, I, I do. And it's like, you know, I mean, there's Kitten of Doom. There's Uncle Phoenix. You know, the couple people have been on the podcast. You know, again, a bunch of names I don't know. But then, you know, there's, uh, you know, uh, Trally Relly, you know, and uh, Triple Charge, you know. Uh, who else is out here that I know? Uh, J-Max on there. Dude, yeah, Fro I'm, Double G's on there. I was there. just going to say, I'm competing against Fro Double G. Best of luck to you, buddy. Uh, hey, if I don't get it, I hope you do. And, yeah, uh, hot frog. Yep. Oh, who else was here? Oh, there's Dirtnap's dad. I know that guy. <laughs> <laughs> he's, he's pretty cool. I'd vote for him. I know uh, him. I know him. Yeah, I you do. Know. And, and, oh my God. and what I did is because I didn't know, you know, I knew about half the people on the list is I kind of like just went on to Twitter and kind of linked through some of the other people um, because it's not necessarily like you don't necessarily want, you know, a really good player. I mean, I think that's neither here nor there. A good player or a bad player. It's a lot to do if the person is good at communicating, is is judging and talking about in their content. Uh, fairly what's going on in the game. Like, it's not like, oh, this is trash, you know, but they have an understanding of this is, this is wacky. This is out of tune. Um, you know, a deeper understanding of the game than just being a really good player or being funny to watch. Um, 
you know, someone who can communicate and, and, and sees what's going on. Um, cause it, it is important that the, the people who we end up as Olympians are, you know, not necessarily good at the game, but good with everything involving the game. Like they understand, cause I think we're going to see, it's going to, I don't think it's going to be like, we're going to be looking for balance changes. Like, I don't think that's where that's going to go. It could be part of it. Um, especially for like the, the non conquest area side of it, but it's going to be a lot to do with a lot of the other stuff. Like if you're sick of seeing the same, uh, clan chests, you know, that's something that can be brought up and someone who communicate, you know, oh, the clan chest is a good idea. You know, we're not asking for, you know, a whole new set of skins. It's a lot of work for free content to, you know, to ask for five new skins, but rotate other stuff, you know, and just add stuff like that to it. I think we're going to see a lot with and looking for bugs and other things. But yeah, I, w- I would definitely agree with that statement, though, because for me, the ideal candidate for something like this would be someone who is not necessarily playing the game a lot or being good at the game, like you were saying, but it's someone who has that attention to detail that's going to listen and going to investigate. And, you know, some people might just take it as face value. Oh, this this is not working right now. Or, oh, this is and they won't actually like go and investigate themselves and come up with a solution. I think that's the, the biggest, um, you know, point of having the um, the team together there is that they will come together and brainstorm a solution. And if people kind of just want to say, oh, this is the problem, fix it, fix it, fix it, without even putting here nor there on what how to fix it or, you know, what, what could be a good solution, I don't right. think that it's necessarily going to be the right choice for them because they want people that, that are going to think and that are going to be intellectual about what's going on, you know. Of course, it's going to be someone someone who knows how to talk and how to manage a community. Like, that's very important. But there is that other side of it that we want someone who's going to be organized and that's going to put together information that's going to make sense and also, you know, take us that step forward between the community and the developers. Yeah, definitely. I think one of the big things we'll see tackled with the Olympians is going to be the the UI. Because, I mean, hi already came out and said this isn't the the ideal UI for much of anybody. But, you know, with it launching on the Switch, they needed something that worked. And with crossplay coming, they needed something that worked. Um, and there's some, there, there are a couple of good elements to this new U, uh, UI. PC players saw a big change from what they had. But for us on console, it's, it's only slightly different than it's ever been. I mean, the layout's a little wonky. But, I mean, it's, it's fairly close in functionality to what we've had for a while. It's not good. But so and in understanding and you want the Olympians to be able to, to see the UI, see what it is now, see what it was on their platform and be like, it's like, well, we, we don't really want to do an overhaul necessarily. But here are some some minor changes you can make, like having to go an extra step. I can't just hit R1, go to my friends, go down to the friend I want to send a, a party invite to and hit thing. I have to be in my party, go down to one of the blank spaces. And then go select them, but so and that was actually a feature that got taken out uh, with the UI change. And that's a simple thing: bring that back, so I don't have to go an extra step necessarily when I'm looking to see who's online in the first place. Another thing that I think is super valuable, at least in terms of that, is having experience with quality assurance and design and things like that. And that's that's coming at least for me. I find that really really valuable because right now in in my actual job that I have, I'm um, a quality assurance analyst and I do some design work and that's kind of like at, at the back seat right now it's kind of like um just some some things that I think about when when I talk about this stuff with my friends because I've been wanting to write kind of an article about uh the UI specifically on why it it's worse than it was before um because for for a lot of people they don't necessarily go into this you know understanding why they don't like something for for a lot of people it was just a knee-jerk reaction I don't like this it's different um but there are like principles, um, at least in design and things like that. And comes that that comes from my background in graphic design as well. That just like, um, you know, the normal person wouldn't necessarily know. Oh, this makes sense now that you explained it to me like that. Or oh, I didn't know that principle existed. So to have that sort of mentality or like bring some sort of niche to the table is something that I'd really like to see from a lot of our Olympians too. Yeah, definitely. So regardless, again, I don't really care who wins in the end. You know, it would be awesome to win, but I'm just happy again to see them taking these steps to improve the game and to improve the community and to improve the relationship between the community and the company. 
That's yeah. something so important to you because yep. I feel like it's just been PR nightmare after PR nightmare sometimes with them because it seems like anytime they change something, Twitter is exploding and people so are complaining on Reddit. Studio. <laughs> yeah, it's just a very, <laughs> it seems like everything is so negative with them and they, I really genuinely hope that something turns around real soon because I, it's getting to the point now where it's like, you know, something something has to change, right? Because they keep like ramming their head against the wall where like the community is feeling like they're not heard. And hopefully this this is the point where it turns around and we finally feel like we have that good relationship with the company again because it's it's been so long since at least I felt like that. I know a lot of people feel like they're getting ignored too. So this is the the next step and definitely a great, great way to go about it. Yeah. I I've I've always been curious. I wonder if they'd ever like do an update to the actual game engine and take the game down for a little while to do a game because I feel like a lot of the issues with gameplay and bugs and glitches and all that kind of stuff I think a lot of it's there's a lot of shit added on top of this you know now older UI or um older game like I mean you just look at how I wonder I wonder how much stress they're putting on what they've built you know from their coding from the ground up for the game um, on an older engine to begin with, a game engine, and I mean, you can look at some things have changed. The difference in graphical quality from season one, season two to now. I, I just wonder mm -hmm. if a lot of our bugs, like the, the Morgan causes bugs. Uh, I just, I just wonder how much of it is just the game. The, well, the game itself is just kind of wearing wearing out, and they need to do a little TLC on it or something. The other thing, just to keep in mind, is. It is a massive game yeah. with a massive amount of content. And it's a game that's played with a ton of people online all at the same time. You know, not all in the same match, obviously. But even then, you know, 10 people in a match, you know, doing stuff all over the Internet. How I got three people in my house going through one Internet, you know, and, you know, usually it's pretty good. Sometimes, you know, even then it has its quirks, you know, but it's even then it's, it's computers. Shit doesn't always go so swell with computers. You know, everything looks right. It tests right. You throw it out there to the world. And, oh, well, we didn't think of that bug. You know, <laughs> yeah. no one ever thought to try that. How did no one ever think to try that? That isn't that obvious. Well, it was so obvious. We didn't try it. Uh, or the know, really weird crap that only players will figure out. Apparently, it's like, what is it? Like, it's apparently, if you're playing Ymir and you enter the Konami code, <laughs> the game... Yeah. Turns into Diablo Seven, which hasn't even been released yet. Like, like some of the some of the ways players figure out how to break a game and test and and designers are like, how did you even? And then you'll go through the 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 list of steps of, well, here's what I did to make it do this, and it's just like, why would you ever do that in a game? I'm pretty mm -hmm. sure Giannis can still all out of the joust map. Yes, he so can. That's cool. Yep. Another thing very interesting that just got brought up <laughs> is that Sylvanas can actually auto over walls. Yeah. Yes, <laughs> he can. Cool. That uh, mm -hmm. someone figured out how to do that. I'm not sure how they did, like you were saying, but uh, new tech discovered every day. Oh, yeah. Sylvanas but, has been in the game for how long now? <laughs> speaking of interesting things, though, they did fix some bugs today. Uh, you should now be able on console to properly mute people. Yay. And Thank also, God. they fixed trading. So that should work the way it's supposed to work instead of you know the conflagged way of going back to the god select screen finding who has them and clicking on it that way i'm glad oh, i'd much rather too. just go right to the person hit the trade button and, and trade with them versus all that extra work yeah a couple of bugs that they fixed on pc at least that well not necessarily bugs but the biggest quality of life adjustment that i saw between this patch and last patch was that they put like a confirm ban when you want to ban something in a ranked game so like, say that I'm in a lobby, and I misclick on Terra by accident. I didn't mean to ban Terra, but I clicked her. It's just banned automatically last patch, but now they finally fixed that. And it was actually so annoying, because I'd be tabbing back into my game, and by accident I'd click on, you know, a god, and then it'd be banned, and I'd be like, I didn't mean to ban that god, I'm sorry, guys. You know, I didn't mean to ban Arachne, but I did, so... Yeah. Oh, first ban Loki. What the hell are you thinking? Oh, no, that's just me playing, because you know he's going to be in my game. <laughs> you know he's going to be in my game. Yeah, we're going to change your name to Loki Magnet. Oh. Oh. All right. Why you well, could say Loki Magnet. So, uh, which way you guys want to go next? We want to, uh, you know, kind of dive into asking Lermy Wormy some more questions here, or do you guys want to go to 
talking about this week's session of progression. I'll put it up for a vote since that seems to be the theme of the day. I, I, I say we go with the old uh, lady of the hour here. I'm up for whatever. <laughs> There's one abstain. Damn it. I say this is why democracy fails. <laughs> Dan, you are going to say something. What? what I said? said I say we go with questions. All right. Old well, man. The other two can't outvote you, so we're going with questions. <laughs> so, Larry, what are you going to college for? Oh, gosh. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, my major is called Interactive Multimedia, but that's basically like computer science for artists. So I yeah. basically do like uh, some coding. I do a, a little bit of game design. I was just in a graphic design minor, but I hated graphic design, so I switched out of it. And now I'm a management minor. Uh, so basically trying to find my, my way. It's like a project manager type of type of job is where I'm kind of looking in the future. But uh, I'm just trying to find my way at this point. You know, my major is kind of <laughs> iffy sometimes. Yeah, I tried graphic design too. I didn't like it at all. It's definitely an acquired taste. <laughs> yeah. yeah. It, it's, it, you know, a lot of people look at the end prod, product and think, yeah, that's what I want to do. And then you learn how you get to that, and you're like, oh, fuck you. <laughs> Have a nice day. Yeah, I actually just, like, just switched my major, uh, not major, minor, out of graphic design last semester. So I was still taking a graphic design class, um, and I chose to drop one because it just was not a fun time. So that class was actually called 3D Packaging, and that was where I had to actually make boxes and things like that for different products and actually put the product inside of it and like make sure it wouldn't break and um, make sure it would like sit right and that it, it like functionally made sense and things like that. And it was so much effort. Oh my uh, God. I, don't, I, <laughs> I didn't even realize that I would be spending so much time on some of these boxes. And I was like, this is not, it's not worth my time. The class was six hours long. Oof. I was like, no, nah, I'm done. <laughs> yeah. I, uh, I do, I do, uh, CAD CAM, I operate, you know, fancy ass machines through computers, and mm. a lot of our time is spent doing very similar things. Yeah. Oh. Definitely, uh, definitely an interesting thing. So, do you have any pets? I do. I have a, a little puppy dog. She is named Mitzi. She is, uh, I think, six oh. years old now. She is smaller than my cat, actually. And my cat's name is Oliver. He's turning two this year. And ooh, ooh. He Oliver, is... as in Oliver and Company? Yeah. Yes! <laughs> oh, you made a happy Yuki. Yeah, great movie. My, Underrated. My mom movie. used to have a tiny dog named Mitzi, so I'm trying not to laugh. <laughs> I know, <laughs> me too. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I don't want to get on kitty stories again, so let's just move oh, on. God, Somebody please, else no. ask a question. <laughs> All right. Uh, okay. You, uh, what was oh, the, go ahead. Oh, oh, go ahead. Go ahead. Nope. Nope. Go ahead. No, All right. No, what no, was the What was the first um, outside of playing Smite thing that you did for Smite? Oh, you mean like not actually like playing playing the game, but like being involved in the community thing like that? Yeah, yeah. Um, I think the first ever thing that I did was coach a European Challenger Cup team, and that was like my first step into the competitive scene after I had been watching the season three pro, pro league like religiously. Like I would come home from school. I was still in high school at that point, so I would come home from school put down my bag, turn on the SPL, and I'd, I'd watch it while doing my homework, and I would be sitting there doing my math problems and watching a man scream, Mom, get the camera! He's got a pedicure! <laughs> or something like that. And so I, I would be freaking out doing my math homework, not really even focusing on it. Um, and so it turned out that because I was watching it so much that I, I had actually learned a lot, and that's honestly the way that I learned so much about Smite was watching the Pro League and watching pro players stream. Um, and through that, I actually got an opportunity with a bunch of people in Europe, and actually now, it's it's crazy to think this, but um, way back then, I don't I don't know if y'all are familiar with the LG roster now, but the ADC on that roster, I actually coached him way back then. Oh, that's awesome! And that oh, that was really the first cool. team ever that I coached, and we actually ended up placing third in the Challenger Cup. So we were we were so close to getting to land. We were one game off because um, the final sort of game that we had to play it was the Challenger Cup was different than it was now. Um, so it's like a set of turn up um games between certain teams and we ended up placing third and so this final game was a best of three whoever one made land and unfortunately we did not win we lost one to two 
but it was it was still such a great experience to be with that team. Have five. I, I, I don't know. I, don't know. I just, like I said, I, I just love taking things beyond just playing the game. So Absolutely. That that is who I am. Yeah, it's, do you know how many hours I spend a week on this podcast? You can ask you can ask Dirt Map's mom for for testif- testification on that. Uh, I'm gonna take a gander at forty. Oh, not 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 quite that many. Oh. Um, but it seems like it sometimes. But, <laughs> yeah, Dirt Map's mom went probably went forty hours. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Oh, no. No, but I have actually spent twelve hours once editing the podcast, but that was under oh, special my. circumstances that. Uh, we that had two, was hilarious. Two guests on. Really yeah. One only had 15 minutes of record time, so it had to be selective. <laughs> and I don't know if the other one was using the push to talk or pausing or something, but, um, you know, so I had to figure out, like, why is this not lining up? Well, oh, all right. Well, here's how I fix this. But, oh my God, it took me 12 hours that day. But I've gotten it down to uh, much, much less than that. But still, you know, I mean, there's recording. There's just, you know, there's the basic, you know, running, you know, basic editing where it's just, you know, you click a button and you wait, you know, a few minutes for shit to happen. And then, and then there's actually going through and cleaning up the audio, which that's the longest part, but, you know, probably several hours and, you know, probably more hours than, you know, I I have to spend on it, but I try to get the best quality out that I can. And, you know, so I, I, it is a lot of editing, but, you know, it's, again, I love the game, but. Anyway, um, we're not here to talk about me right now. Why are we talking about me? Because <laughs> you made it all about you. Huh. Oh, uh, how did you, uh, you come up with your name, Larmy Wormy? Oh, gosh. Uh, my name before this name uh, was Bobu22970. So y'all can see why I wanted to change my name. <laughs> <laughs> um, but actually, it's part of my last name, at least Lerm is. And so I actually got called Larmy Wormy a lot in high school just because it was something that rhymed with my last name. And oh, okay. I was just like at a loss for what I wanted to change my name to. Cause that was actually when I got on that team, right? So that first team that I was with, they're like, our coach isn't going to be named Boo Boo, whatever the fuck it is. So, <laughs> 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 change your fucking name, kid. I don't want to deal with this right now. And I was like, uh, I don't know what to change my name to. Uh, so then I just changed it to this. And that's what it's been ever since. It's one of the funnier stories for a name. That, that, that is a very good origin story. I like it. <laughs> Yeah, I I kind of think back on it now, and I'm like, gosh, my name is so weird. Why would anyone think of naming themselves this? And then I realize, like, the story, and it's just, I don't know, it has a special place in my heart. That team does, at least, because they, they were the first people that really gave me a chance. And it is such a wonderful feeling to be able to be given some opportunity like that, because it is so hard to come across, at least nowadays, um... Even even as a coach, especially as a coach, considering, you know, high res doesn't even like give them guaranteed salaries and things like that. And I could go on and on and on about that. But, <laughs> you know, it, I, I love coaching. I think it's awesome. I think a lot more people need to be respected uh, as coaches because it is a hard job and people don't necessarily realize that. Oh, yeah. Yeah. A lot goes on your shoulders because, you know, the players are relying on you for a lot. Yeah, I know, absolutely. I mean, just. From my perspective, I don't even want to know what all you would have to do with the coach because, <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah, I'll just take your word for it on that one. But, uh, <laughs> speaking of rosters, they are out for season six. If you have not seen it, all the rosters are out there now. There's some interesting There's, teams. They are for spicy. sure. They are. Uh, I'm I'm still still uh I I I gotta still root for 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 Splice. I mean seriously. I mean, we had Kabam on. I don't know if you know the story, Lermy Wormy, but we had him on like a month before Worlds. He was like one of our last guests before, you know, guests dried up because everybody was going to HRX and shit like that. And had him on, and, and we joked at the end of the podcast, so you're going to come back on after you guys win Worlds, right? Well, he was our first repeat guest. He did tell me that story. I actually um, <laughs> made uh, good friends with Kabam, actually. So I I spoke to him uh, ad nauseum about coaching and things like that because he is such a wealth of knowledge. If, if y'all aren't following Kabam, oh, yeah. you should be. He is such an intelligent person. He has so much to say about Smite and he really is passionate about what he does. And I'm so happy that he finally got the chance to, to, you know, show off how much, how hard he works because he really, really works 
so hard at what he does. And I, like I said, I'm so proud of him for winning Worlds because he, he really deserved it. Dude, and what a story they had last year. I mean, oh, yeah. seriously, from like zero to hero, right? Like literally. I mean, that was awesome. Yeah, there, yeah. there honestly could not have been a better storyline for, for a team like that. And even considering, um, you know, what, what was going on with, um, the beach house and things like that, like people like, um, almost, like what's what sort of like, like they put the beach house on a pedestal like oh that's that's the reason why they they the one world is because they had that chance to be together well this season everyone's yep. gonna be like that so we'll have to see how much better people really get um in that sort of environment and that's really really exciting for me at least because i think that's like the next big step for these players is to actually all be able to live together and um play together in in that literal sense yeah. yeah. How big of an advantage do you think it is that Splice stuck all together, and I believe SSG stuck together? I'm not sure if any other teams are all the same members or not. Mm, but no, I think it was not. just those, those two. two teams for sure are all the same members, so that's got to be a huge advantage for them. Yeah, it was also uh, now SK. They were trifecta. They're all still together, too. Oh, that's right. Yeah, 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 yeah. SK um, just changed their name. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I think they those, those three teams will at least maybe come out a little bit ahead of the pack. I think like the teams that are all EU – um, like Renegades, um, and Pittsburgh. Well, Pittsburgh for sure is going to be fire to watch. I am so excited mm-hmm. for that team. But the teams that are super familiar with each other are going to have a much easier time performing because really the biggest thing about Smite that, um, a lot of people don't realize that are kind of on the, on the lower end of the competitive skill is that staying together as a team and forming team synergy is so incredibly important. It's like, Maybe the second most important thing of the game, because those are the people that Mm -hmm. you're going to be playing with and depending on. And if you're not communicating with them efficiently or understanding how they play or how they think, then you're not going to be playing to your top potential. So having that chance to live together is going to be huge. Yeah, I mean, early early prediction. Pittsburgh. Who's winning worlds? Pittsburgh. Pittsburgh. Mm. Mm. I'm from Pennsylvania, so I mean, I couldn't be terribly upset. Me too. uh, (laughs) <laughs> if uh, a PA team wins. I mean, I- I'm not from that side of the state, but uh got to say, it it is a stacked team. I mean, you're really looking at some of the top top minds in the game. I mean, you've got Adapting, you've got Milsey, Zeros, like e- even like Death. I mean, the whole team is stacked. I don't know what to say. They're yeah. all good. Yeah. <laughs> well, I mean, any yeah, team with- was one of my early faves. Sorry, go ahead. Yeah, I was going to say, any team with Deathwalker or Deathstalker is going to be a- amazing to watch because he's just such a crazy player. He makes so much happen in a game. Yeah, and then I when mean, you look at the rest of the roster there too. to back it up. Yeah, I mean, they've even got Roe on the coach side. And yeah. Roe, honestly, like, has come from Direwolves. So now, like, he has grown so much as, as a, a smite mind. He really thinks out of the box, I feel like, and knows, knows these players incredibly well. He really tries to make sure that he gets in there and, and does everything that he can. I think he's a really excellent fit for this um, roster. That also kind of kind of leads me into into something else, though. It's something that I was kind of disappointed in, is that most of these teams actually don't have coaches, and that, that kind of uh, you know spooks me I, out. I saw that. I'm like, I was going to ask you about that, and then I kind of got distracted but yeah i thought that was interesting that you know a lot of teams don't have coaches yeah so like, so what i what i've heard from my my insider knowledge i don't really have that much insider knowledge but yeah, there, there's a little bit of talk that that's been going on about it and that um people just like the orgs at least are having trouble trying to justify the, the cost because a lot of the people that are willing to move are asking for for a salary and you know high risk doesn't provide a salary for coaches which is unfortunate but right. you know that's just how it is at this point they can't really do anything about that um so it's kind of outside the budget to bring someone else in unless it's for incredibly cheap and so these top coaches you know need that funding to really commit to it because you know all of these people except for Gabon, aren't from america roe is not Selene is not Selene has connections in america because his girlfriend lives here but um you know biggie australia <laughs> roe is australia too um that is a huge change for them to be coming to America, and it's going to be expensive. And so for people that, that aren't from America or aren't as willing to move, like Alpha Jackal is not willing to move, they just can't afford that price considering that they're going to have, you know, less than the people that are willing to move. And that's just a shame, I think, because it's going to be such an important factor because 
it's not it's not about getting the synergy together as a team anymore. It's not just about that. It's important, but they're living together. That's a whole other level of you know having to deal with and manage things because these are they're going to get frustrated. They're going to get upset. They're going to lose games. And y- y'all know how people get sometimes when they lose games. If they're no. if they're feeling frustrated, no. if they're feeling like they're not growing, they're going to be problems. And there's got to be someone outside that has to deal with that, or else it's going to be a much larger problem than it needs to be. Do you know what else I saw was so funny? Worrying. Yeah, what's up? That uh, so I f- I forget who it was on Twitter, but I think Smittens retweeted it, and they're like, "So when are these orgs going to start uh getting uh team moms? Because you know all these uh man babies are going to need someone to cook and clean for them." Yeah, that I I also kind of contributed to the joke too. I said, "LFT team mom cooking, cleaning, and internet shut off by 10 p.m." <laughs> <laughs> And when you're grounded, that's just three hours of smite. <laughs> oh you also need someone. You also need someone who's not, you know, in the heat of the moment in the game between the players, because you know, no matter how good a team gets along, uh, me and Dan can attest, uh, uh, attest to this. Uh, you, you, you play a lot together. You're going to yell at each other, and you, you need to you need someone kind of in between you to let everyone calm down. <laughs> it's just Shut up, turn into shouting match. Beagle, go to your corner. Dirtnap's dad, go try to not be in silver anymore. Guy, you play Smite. Dan, fuck you. Hey, I was in the right <laughs> position. It was yeah, just right. Dan over there VGSing with the Mercury that put me out of position. <laughs> hey, that was worth it and hilarious. <laughs> it was worth it. I, I gotta give you that. Yeah, that that's definitely my, my biggest concern looking at these rosters, is I really think the coaches need to be valued more, and I think that's more coming from from the orgs end than it is the players. I think the players would like to have a coach. The problem is, is that the orgs are not willing to ship out, you know, the money for big names or people that aren't willing to move. Yeah. And it, it's worrying. Yeah. And part of that, and we can be honest about this, part of that is Smite's not a huge game. There's not a massive prize pool. Yeah, it's growing. It's growing, but it, it's, it's growing. not, it's not League two years ago. It's not Call of Duty. It's not PUBG. It's not Fortnite. We don't mention yeah. the F word. Um, <laughs> fuck? No, oh, fuck that shit. Sorry. No, we, we mentioned that one. It's the other one that's bad. <laughs> Except for Beagle. Hashtag make Beagle swear. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> don't worry, Beagle. Give it a few years. You'll be a salty, disillusioned young adult. Oh, believe me, I know. <laughs> but, yeah, I, I wish we'd see more coaches. Um... I mean, if a team with coach wins worlds again, that might be incentive as well. Yeah, I mean, it's it's just um, well, I know I know there are some coaches to come back on before and after again. So yeah, I've heard that there are some coaches under wraps right now. They haven't signed their contracts yet, but that even still, to have six teams unannounced out of ten at the beginning of the the, the preseason is is um, you know I I hope something changes here because. I don't know what's going to happen with these players living together. And, <laughs> you know, <laughs> there are going to be problems. There are going to be problems regardless. <laughs> you know, these are gamers. Gamers have problems. <laughs> yeah, Dan. I have a problem. Oh, uh, yeah, I was thinking it. I was thinking it. <laughs> so I've, I've, been, I've been thinking about this. So I've been thinking about this question. It's a very important question. I don't know why I haven't been asking it over the last... 37 episodes. What's your favorite Disney movie? Mine? Oh, yeah. Hercules. Easy. Hercules. Nice. Oh, my God. That's an interesting you pick. Just, you just made Dan fall in love with you. Hercules has the best music, the best lore, best the best oh, art direction. Oh, but the lore is so wrong. It can be wrong, but oh, it's, it's creative. it's horrifically wrong. Yeah. It's creative, and it also does tie back to to actual history, which a lot of Disney movies try to, but this one, at least in the art history side of things, I I come from an art background, you know, I I see all these different things, and they reference type A in Gospel, uh, you know, in that that one song that they start off with, I was like, I'm done, y'all sold me, this is it, I love it. Yeah, it did a lot of really good things. It's just interesting, it's like, it's not one I would expect most people to pick. I I did like the art style, I appreciated the, uh, the nod to that Greco-Roman art style through the entire movie. I think they did a very good job with that. Oh, yeah. There, there were a bunch of references. I actually, <laughs> throw back to high school, I was in AP art history. I was a senior. And my art teacher 
uh, decided, all right, y'all, we're going to have a, a test today on, on um, Greek architecture. Said, okay. She starts putting <laughs> on a YouTube video. I'm like, what is it? She's like, we're watching Hercules today. Like, yeah. Uh, <laughs> so wait, what, what do you mean? She was like, all right, y'all, pull out a piece of paper, write down 15 different statues that you see in this opening. And I was like, you got to be kidding me. <laughs> is this for a grade? Hell yeah, it is. That's awesome. Uh, Meanwhile, I'm fervently already writing the 17 I know. Because yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I've seen it 20 times. You uh, already know I did my research. <laughs> yeah, Dan could probably, if, if, I gave, if we gave him a hot minute, he could probably recite the movie word by word. I'm, it is a good hmm. movie. All right, let's move on to uh, our, our session of progression this week. Is it time what? for this week's session of progression? It is. What is my... I don't know. Does anybody else I'm, have I'm any other questions before we wrap now. up? I mean, we've asked the important ones. Where'd you get your name? Pet's <laughs> favorite Disney movie? Beagle, guy, all good? I think I am good. I'm good. Don't... Don't worry, Army, about Beagle not asking a lot of questions. She's the quiet just, one on the podcast. I mean, I what, what, what do you want? What, what do you want to do going forward? What, what are your plans going forward? Oh gosh, you know, th- there's so much that I want to do with my. It's kind of hard to, to narrow it down. I I think my goal before before I end my career with this game is to get in the SPL as a coach. That's that's the ultimate dream is to do that. Um, but immediate future, hoping to sneak my way onto an SML team, maybe. Uh, I'd like to start writing articles again. I haven't written an article really since um, August of this year. I, I gave up my um, my job with Dig and Toss because I had just started school and it, there wasn't a lot of time for it. But hopefully I will have more time to write it because I really enjoyed it. And I was producing a whole lot of various content about, about different things. And it just made me so happy to hear that people were actually like reading it and really enjoyed my work because it's such a, a rare thing for people today to um, to actually read things. Because videos are so commonplace now that, you know, people will stray away from the newspapers to just watch the news or watch an update on Snapchat or whatever it may be. Um, so it was it was a great, great feeling to hear that people actually enjoyed what I wrote. All right. <laughs> Beagle, last chance before we move on. Okay, I'll, I'll ask this. I'll ask this. Do you, Do you like watch Supernatural? Supernatural? Oh, God. <laughs> oh, <laughs> nice. <laughs> Got her. Oh. The answer is, unfortunately, I do not. I haven't watched a TV show since I don't know when. It's the, the most part of my, I consume my content on YouTube, and I don't really watch TV. <laughs> well, if you ever need a TV show to watch, watch it. It's great, I promise. I'll oh. keep it in mind. <laughs> you got issues. Uh, that was great, guy. <laughs> do you watch Supernatural? <laughs> All right. Hold on, let me catch uh, my breath here. <laughs> uh, yeah, I need a minute. All right. So, moving on to this week's session of progression. Don't you uh, mean session of supernatural? Oh, wait. Session of supernatural. <laughs> I wish. We Beagle would are actually going to be talking attention. about Sir Kay. Hey. Guys, <laughs> nice. Sir Kay. Planet during that time. We are talking about Sir Kay now. Shut up. <laughs> Mommy, the kids are fighting. Yeah, you guys are both grounded after the show. Oh shit! Dan yeah, I wish. But it's I Friday night. I don't care. Sure. Oh. Yep. Dan has to work. Never mind. <laughs> so anyway, Dan, before we dive into the nitty gritty details of how to play Sir Cat, Yuki, why don't you give us a little bit of the the lore on the old goddess well, here? Sir Cat's uh, obviously she's an Egyptian goddess. Um, and she's also the goddess of other things, fertility, nature, animals, medicine, magic, and healing. Uh, so it's kind of one of the things when you look at the mythology, it would have been cool to see a little more in her kit through the lore. Instead of just kind of going with the uh, with the theme of, you know, well, she's always portrayed as either a scorpion with the head of a human or with a scorpion on her head. Uh, picture the really bad scorpion king, uh, the rock, and there you go. That's one of the depictions of Sir Ket, is basically that. (laughs) She is often portrayed alongside Neith as uh, she kind of fills that, you know, fertility and healing role alongside Neith in Egyptian mythology. Um, She does have a constellation, uh, which is depicted initially in the Middle Kingdom, which is pretty cool. Uh, Her twin sister is uh, Nephethys, 
which we don't have in the game. Uh, but I mean, I just lost my place. Uh, so yes, the, the scorpion, the, the scorpion uh, portrayal comes a lot from you know in Egypt there are and were a crap load of snakes and scorpions, um, and hmm. part of her role was specifically protecting against the venom from scorpions and snakes. Um, so you find her a lot of times when it comes to like household protection goddesses. Uh, she showed a lot, you know, in the the artwork depicting the pharaohs because, you know, heaven forfend the pharaoh get bit by a snake in the middle of the night, um, which did happen a couple of times, just nobody died from it that we know. So that's mostly Sir Ket. I think there was something else, but I can't remember. No, we're good. Yeah. <laughs> so who, who's reading the old abilities this week before Lermy Wormy gives us some of her expertise that I've heard she has? I vote for Dan. I'll read them off. All this right, week. Dan, you have been voted on in this democracy, and it's your turn. This democracy sucks. <laughs> I got one out of five. All right, I'm reading the abilities. Okay. Uh, Sir Ket's passive is Catalyst. Sir Ket's basic attacks apply Catalyst, which consumes her lingering, po- lingering poisons from Deathbane and Cobra's Kiss. If the target is affected by two or three different poisons, they take additional damage. Two poisons equals 10% of target's maximum health as physical damage. Three poisons equals 20% of target's maximum health as physical damage. Her first ability, Deathbane. Sir Ket dashes three times from side to side, dealing damage and applying Deathbane poison to each enemy hit. This ability can critically hit, and Sir Ket is immune to knock-up while dashing. Deathbane poison reduces a target's physical protection for a short time and remains in a lingering dormant state for 20 seconds. The damage is 60 to 140 plus 45% of your physical power, and protection reduction is 10% for 3 seconds. Cobra's Kiss. Sir Ket launches her two blades forward, dealing damage and applying the Cobra's Kiss poison. Cobra's Kiss poison drives gods to madness, forcing them to attack nearby allies, dealing this damage again, or walk harmlessly towards Sir Ket. Cobra's Kiss remains in a lingering dormant state for 20 seconds. Damage is 50 to 150 plus 50% of your physical power, and the madness duration scales from 1 second to 1.4 seconds. Ambush. Sir Ket vanishes, rooting herself in place. She may leap once, revealing herself and dealing damage to enemies. She will stay hidden until she leaps or cancels this ability. Enemy gods within range 12.5. Well, that's worded weird. <laughs> uh, enemy gods within the range of 12.5 units will also reveal her. Star. I had to put some extra words in there. Uh, the damage is 80 to 320 plus 50% of your physical power. Her ultimate ability, Last Breath, Sir Ketz leaps onto an enemy, stunning them, applying the Last Breath poison, then pushing them 30 units, then pushes, come on high res, pushes them 30 units away. The Last Breath poison deals damage to the target over the next 5 seconds and prevents them from healing. If an enemy dies while infected with Last Breath, they will explode, applying the poison to all enemies within 20 units. The damage is 180 to 660 true damage over 5 seconds. Healing reduction. All of the healing. Stun duration is 1 second. Jesus, you forget all right. how crazy your kid is. <laughs> it, yeah. Yeah. So, <laughs> Lermy, what, what knowledge can you impart on us, you know, on, on how to play, you said, Sir Kit? Well, Sir Kit is a very flexible god, I feel like. You see her kind of played in either the jungle role or the support role, and that's because she can really go for a damage build, or she can be really tanky and be just as successful. So when I first started to pick up Sir Ket, I kind of opted for, for the full damage build. You know, you got to hop in and full crit someone to death. But that's not always the way that you have to do it. Sometimes it's great to just, just build defense and be that sort of frontline, because um, she is such a mobile character. She has two abilities that can get her in and out of a fight. So basically, you could jump in or you could dash in and then ult someone or cope or kiss someone and then set up for your team. And so that's that's kind of how I like to play her. I'm a support player by nature, so I really enjoy playing her in the support role. Um, and I, I even venture <laughs> into doing that in other, other modes other than Conquest as well. But um, she is so effective as, as a tanky god because she has CC, because she has Pratt Shred, and because she has true damage. 
no matter what you're building on Sir Cat, that true damage is gonna is gonna be the same. So even if you don't have power, it's still gonna go through all all of the protections that the enemy may have. And that's why she's a pretty good tank killer too, because like I was saying, if you have protections or you don't have protections, it's gonna do the same thing. So a couple a couple of things to to keep in mind when you're playing Sir Cat is that some of the some of the biggest mistakes that I see players uh, doing with her is trying to auto attack cancel and break catalyst. The the more uh, stacks of catalyst that you have, the the more damage it's going to do. So even if you are are trying to to get all the poisons on them, um, it's going to be better for you to try and get all three of them rather than to opt to blow up only one because that's that's her passive. Is when you hit an ability other than your third ability, it'll apply a stack of catalyst. And so it's not going to do that 10% max health um, until you have two, two stacks. So that could be your, your one and your two. It could be your one and your ult. It really doesn't matter how you apply them. But um, the most important thing is aiming to get that three poisons onto your enemy. So it's, building a tank makes that really easy because instead of having to worry about, oh, I'm going to get blown up if I try and get in and hit my abilities, they're not going to do damage to me. And I'm still going to do 20% of their max health, and they can't do anything about it. Uh, so that's that's pretty much one thing that I would try to focus on. In terms of, of building her, I like to start her off with some physical defense and cooldown, because that's really going to uh, help you excel as um, a support, a more supporty Sir Kent. Because uh, the more that you have your ultimate on, the more that you can engage. Another really cool thing to pick up is Blink, because people are so unsuspecting of Blink in a lot of scenarios. Maybe not on Sir Cat as much, because she's been out for who knows how long. But um, just being able to be that surprise engage, surprise into ult, or blink into uh, Cobra's Kiss, they have that's going to force a beads, almost for sure. And she has such a, a ingrained fear <laughs> into your enemy sometimes, is that it, you could just ambush, and someone hears that, and they know that you're coming, right? So you jump on them, and then they're expecting the Cobra's Kiss. But they're just going to beads, because they expected that. And they're not gonna have beats, you don't waste your ult or your kit. So it really depends on the situation, but being flexible with her build and her playstyle is really gonna help you excel in different situations. So my my tip, I guess, for Saket is to try her tanky. You never know, because it's honestly such a different way of playing her, but you're still gonna be just as useful. I will say the the great one, Dicey Victory. Would play Sir Cat support all the time for us. Yep. Back in the day, when when Dicey was full boat into Smite, now he's more part time. Still get to see him every now and then. Not enough, but you know. Uh so ha- let me two prong this here. So you're building Sir Cat support. How do you build out your abilities? I normally still level the Deathbane just because it's it has that prot shred. Um... And it, it is going to scale pretty well, regardless of how much power that you have. You could opt to go for a Cobra's Kiss because it will increase the madness duration, but it's only increasing by 0.4 seconds. So overall, you are going to get almost a half of a second payoff by leveling that ability. But if, if you're with an ADC, or if you're with some other gods in a different mode that can't clear very well, you might want to still level up that Deathbane. But I would always recommend getting a point in the alt, just because it's going to be or like leveling up the alt whenever you can. Because it's just going to be that much more true damage onto your enemy, and it's gonna it's gonna continue to scale very well into the late game. She uh, her her two can hit two separate people technically, can't it? Yeah, it definitely can, yeah. and that's something that uh, really high level players will do. It you see Cubo Fred uh, doing it all the time in the SPL. He really likes this Sir Cat, um, and something that Sir Cat does very well is she has great early clear. So something that's kind that kind of I do a lot, but also a lot of other higher level players do a lot, is they will actually solo the speed camp, go to the red camp, and then blink engage on duo lane, because she'll have hit level 2 by then, and she'll have Cobra's Kiss, and she'll also have Deathbane at that point. And theoretically, that should either force beads or get an early kill, depending on the active situation of the duo lane, and what characters they are, and so on and so forth. So, because she has that early clear with her Deathbane, uh, she is able to do something kind of sneaky like that. And I know a lot of people like to meme, oh, don't gank before level two, that's such a sweaty thing to do. I don't know, it's fun. <laughs> you get really fed. It's it's a really interesting way to go about it. Getting fed is always fun. 
You know, she flexes into a lot of places too. Um, you can because of that tankiness um, and her good early clear and the true damage. You can you can play around in solo lane with her as well. So she does actually, from my perspective, fit the three roles pretty well with about the same build. Yeah, I, I would definitely say so. I would say you, you definitely need to, if you're playing support, you need to incorporate some of those auras into your build, though, because they're just so important in the meta right now. If we see some item shifts going to Season 6, maybe it could be different. Maybe they want to stray away from the auras again, like they did with um, the helmets way back when <laughs> they, they had that uh, sort of meta. But who knows what we're going to see in terms of item changes. But for right now, Definitely stick to at least the sovereignty to start as long as there's no excess magical scariness on the enemy team. Um, but then also look into a void stone maybe because that's going to be incredibly helpful with whatever other physicals you've got on your team. And that's a very unique item that um, only physicals can buy, of course. And it's just such a great bang for your buck because you get that aura that reduces enemy physical protections, but you also get physical power and physical defense. So definitely one of the, one of the core items that I would say on Circat, whether you're building her tanky or not, it's going to help you do a ton more damage than you think you're going to. So how do you like to play against Circat? If you see a Circat on the other team heading your way, what what do you do to play against her? Definitely be be patient, but in, in terms of uh, team comps at least, try to try to draft into some cripples or ways to interrupt Circat because that's definitely one of her weaknesses. Is that she is very stuck when she can't use her mobility, because that's half of her kit, right? She has a dash and she has a jump, but when she doesn't have that, what does she have? She has a taunt. That's about it. Yeah. Um, so drafting into Ardia or Poseidon, or even picking a god that can keep up with that mobility, uh, like a Giannis, can even chase her down really well. So some of, some of those gods are, are definitely ways to consider. Some, something that will keep her still for enough time for your mage to blow her up, or your hunter, or whatever it may be. Also, be be very wary of rotations because her ganks are are classically scripted because of the way that her kit functions. You know, there's only really one way that you can do it. You gotta jump in, use your two, and then death them back and forth until they die. And if they don't die, you auto them or you halt them, and you hope that someone's gonna finish them off for you or the poison will get them. <laughs> so, in that sense, she's kind of a predictable god, but she has that flexibility in her kit where. Like I said before, she could just scare you. She could jump in, just get your beads, and then come back. Um, but that's that's where I was saying being patient, too, because she she might try and do something sneaky with you. So you've got to really be aware for when she's going to come in on you, because when she does, she's going to use her death bane, she's going to use her ult. And that's when you should really invest into a beads or an aegis to try and get away from her. I would also recommend playing a god maybe with a root or with a dash, some way to keep keep her away from you or use zoning tools. So I think one of one of the best um gods kind of against her is like a Scylla, because she has that that leap and she has a root. So Sir Ket comes up to her and um uses Cobra's Kiss. Well you're right in front of me, I'm just gonna sick him you and you can't do anything because I'm just gonna run away now and you can't Cobra's kiss me. You can't um you can't ambush, you can't death bane. You're just stuck. So some some god that has some semblance of self peel Definitely a really good idea um, to play against her. Interesting. And don't Very be a tank. Interesting. Don't be a tank. I hate tanking against her cat. She does so much damage. That is true. I mean, there are a couple of gods that really mess her up, though. Like I was saying, Ardio. Even even Athena and Ares can do really well. Geb messes her up especially because that true damage is just going to get mitigated by that shield. Yeah. So depending on what sort of circumstance you're in, you just don't want to be a tank alone with her because she, she'll mess you up in that case. But if you can support whoever your damage is, whoever your mid is, or your ADC, to just keep them alive, then you're doing your job against the Circad. Yep, that's half a, half a tank's job is keeping the squishy alive because you see, you see supports chasing people around and, and the, the damage dealers, you know, your mage, your assassin, your hunter can't do what they're trying to do. It's like, no matter what you do as a tank, your job is to, you know, make sure they get out or get their damage off. Sometimes... Yeah, I mean, that's, that's just the name of the game against a god like that, because she is so incredibly dependent on getting some sort of farm, because if she, if she is not hitting level 5 at the same time as the enemy jungler, she's going to be in such trouble, uh, especially depending on who she's against, because, you know, she, she really needs her ultimate to get sort of these... um closer to mid-game ganks rolling because at that point people are going to have all their abilities they're going to have one or two items you're going to either have to have really really good cooperation really darn good luck or 
going to have to play everything perfectly. You know what I'm saying? Because it's, it's going to be difficult if you're coming from behind. But at the same time, that's when you can transition into the tanky build. You know, you're going in the game, you think you're going to be able to do well. Oh no, okay, you know, you died in the first wave in mid, whatever. You know, you, you pass it on and you go to this more tanky build, and that way you can still be effective without getting blown up every fight, because that tanky build is just as good as the not tanky build. Definitely. I, I much pr- I much prefer her tank over the full damage. Just the survivability, um, if you're doing like, if you're doing ranked and you've got your circuit down, you're playing her pretty well. Um, she she's good with that tank build of doing the enough damage and and having enough survivability in, in CC in a team fight that you know you can. She's a, one of the better, not one of the great, but one of the better carry guys I think, especially from a jungle role. I would definitely agree with that. It might be just my personal preference, but when I really want to carry a game, I lock in Sir Cat instantly. And like I said, I'm a support player, so when you're putting me in jungle, you know it really is a big deal. <laughs> so, most important question, as always, what's her best skin? Oh gosh, I uh, I like all of her skins, honestly, except for the um, the Madam Blade skin. I don't know, I'm just not very into that aesthetic, I guess, but uh, Dread Queen... Or Don't Kitty Kaboom. Those two are great. <laughs> I really liked is is I don't even know how to pronounce it. The Kanoki? Yeah. That that one's pretty cool too. I, I got it as soon as it came out because of course, you know, me being the tank circuit main I am, I just want to be a freaking ninja and run around yeah. the place, you know? Uh, the word you're looking for is Kunoichi. Sure. That's what I said. <laughs> you said Kanuki. Exactly. I think the best part about Dread Queen Circuit is spamming the woohoo, honestly. Yeah. I'm surprised oh, they didn't yeah. get, like, C and D'd on that skin. Yeah, I can't say for sure, but, um, it's a little, uh, ooh, you know? <laughs> it's, it's a little close. A little close. <laughs> yeah. yeah, well, some some companies realize <laughs> it's just free advertising for them, right? Yeah. Some companies realize that. Rest in peace. Mortal Kombat. <laughs> <laughs> Dan's still mad losing his rock skin. And it wasn't even NetherRealm Studios. It was uh, Universal or whoever that owns the movie rights mm-hmm. that mm-hmm. did it. Even worse. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I'll never watch that movie again. <laughs> I'll Damn never you! watch that movie for the first time. Uh, it, it, Mortal, the Mortal Kombat movie did not age well. No. 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 <laughs> <laughs> it, it didn't do that great coming out, <laughs> and didn't age well. Like ten days after it was out, it, it wasn't bad in its day. It wasn't great, but it wasn't bad. The second one was awful. It's kind of like watching any movie from the eighties right now. It's yeah, just like yeah, the eighties should just be forgotten, <laughs> dude. But when I was a kid, that shit was dope. <laughs> now I look at it like, what the hell was I on? My mom must have been doing drugs you know? <laughs> <laughs> when she was pregnant with me. I'll tell you what, I thought I enjoyed that shit. I'd explain know? a few things. Yeah, it would, would. You know, I watched Big Trouble Little China. I'm like, you know, this used to be a really awesome movie, and now I'm looking at it like, okay, I used to think this th- these were good graphics. Mm-hmm. <laughs> All right, moving on, moving on. So, <laughs> any other tips or questions about the old Sir Kett before we wrap her on up there. Well, you know what? We did miss a question, actually, in the guest question. Did we? Yeah. Oh. oh, what did we miss? Merc and Zombie. Uh, oh, never mind. That was, an old, that was for the last guest. I'm still going to ask it, because who cares? This is a great question. Merc and Zombie's question from our last guest. If you could get a Hindu man skin made of any god, who would it be? A Hindu man skin? Oh, gosh. Um... <laughs> I don't know. That's such an interesting question. I think, well, he is the gambler. So I think it has to be on a god that is definitely similar to that. So I, I might say Baron, honestly, because he, he kind of has that vibe about him where he's like, he's the life of the party, right? He, he's about to gamble his life away just just to, exactly to get a, a pentacle. Exactly you know what I'm saying? I thought it was the Baron, too. Just mm-hmm. give him a big bow tie yeah. and shit. <laughs> Yeah. Here's here's what I've been thinking. It's not Hindu man, but it's 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 close. Aggression Achilles skin. <laughs> oh, God. I mean that that's perfect, honestly. Yeah. <laughs> I'm, I'm I'm just putting it out there. Agro, I hope you hear this. Full voice pack. So and that everything. you can tell aggression that I'm supporting him. Oh, 
Wait, I know a question that we're missing from the from the community because it's oh, been tagged yep. as a uh, you know, you know what my question is. Don't make me type it every week. <laughs> yeah. Oh. To guy, <laughs> you know what I'm talking about. <laughs> yeah, un- Uncle Phoenix. He uh, it's like a it's like his question. He wants to. We have we're, we're supposed to be doing a karaoke episode. Are you gonna come back for that? Uh, I I could. I mean, I I do like to sing. I'm kind of embarrassed about it, but uh, we'll have to see. You know, put put oh, a, a mic's heart in me, and we'll see. As, We've been saying this is gonna happen since the beginning. So that's part of the joke, Beagle. Is it will eventually happen in some form, but until then, we're gonna milk it for all it's worth without saying. How many people actually said yes? To we this? have How like an all we this? have an all star <laughs> lineup right now. Right, pretty much everybody about? said yes. Or, we have all the casters. They've either said yes or, well, if F. Dot said yes, I can't say yes. <laughs> <laughs> That's a valid answer. All right. Well, I think that pretty much wraps it up here for this week because, well, Dan's got to get to work tonight. So, yeah. Um, yeah. R- I really appreciate you coming on here this week, Lermy Wormy. It was great getting to know you a little bit better and uh, looking forward to continuing to build our smite relationship i wish you the best of luck in becoming an olympian so folks uh you know don't forget to get out there and vote for that um that's right i'm also give this girl a uh oh go ahead uh well also i just want to throw out here i want to get rid of these other codes that i got here so that they don't expire so got one more to throw out here for you guys today Ooh. and this is speaking of baron somdi for the Count Somdi. I don't know why they kept Baron in for that. It should have been just Count Somdi, you know. But anyway, so let's see if my old eyes can read this because, you know, I struggled on that last one. <laughs> All right. S, as in Sam. I didn't say scram to the cat, but he's, he did anyway. So anyway, S as in Sam. C as in Charlie. B as in Bravo. R as in Robert. 7, 1. F as in Frank. Seven three E as in Edward A as in Apple zero nine zero one zero two. Again, that's Count Baron Somdi S C B R seven one F seven three E A zero nine zero one zero two. Good Are for you all sure platforms. I have this? Yes, I am sure. Damn, somebody who ever first person listening to the podcast <laughs> is making out big this week. Right? Yep, making out big this week. Well, I wanted to go big time. To, I mean, hell, we're, we're, we're future possible Olympians here this week. <laughs> two of us. So why not throw out two codes? Make it big time, right? Hell yeah. So I hope, uh, you, I hope you both didn't win it. I yeah. hope so, too. <laughs> I, yeah. I, I, I would be honored. You know, and, and if you all so choose me to go out there and, and represent for you, trust me, I will allow my nerdness to ensue and make it great. So. That's all I got to say. So, Lermy Wormy, I am going to throw it over to you. Uh, you know, feel free to self-promote as much as possible. And how can people get a hold of you? All right. Well, I am most active on Twitter right now. My Twitter at is the same as my name, at Lermy Wormy. I also am streaming pretty often on Twitch now. So that is also Lermy Wormy, but with another Y at the end. So Lermy Wormy, as they say, two Ys at the end there. <laughs> I also can be found on GamerSense. I am offering lessons from less than $15. Now, I have dropped my prices a bit there. So if you are interested in taking lessons on really anything, I'm open to hearing what y'all want to learn about and, you know, preparing lessons for you and any anything that you really need to learn. Go ahead and contact me on there. There also is a link on my Twitch and on my Twitter to get to that page. Um, I guess the last thing I kind of want to talk about is I am running a giveaway right now on Twitter, and that is for the first five people to beat Co-op Arena in under five minutes. They are entered to win a Shadow Stalker is Nami. So if you can beat Co-op Arena in under five minutes, send me a screenshot on Twitter, and you'll be entered to win. <laughs> Yuki's, Yuki <laughs> likes that. He, he, you might be getting a screenshot from him. <laughs> I can hear him giggling maniacally. Uh, I think I've... I think I've soloed in nine and a half minutes with just with me and four bots. Well, I can tell you right now, the world record is four minutes and 44 seconds. Oof. Dan's Oof. got this. Do you think you could teach dad to be in position? <laughs> I would almost pay 15 bucks for that. 
Hey, God's paying. I'm learning. You know, right now, I, I only have access to a PC right now, so unfortunately, console will have to hold <laughs> off until uh, cross-platform comes through. But, you know, once cross-platform is through, I'm happy to, to nope, help out whoever it, is in need. It will work because he has PS4. Nope, nope. Yeah, I'm PS4. Oh so, no! Uh, oh, it, it's not only when cross-platform comes out, but when Sony gets the stick out of its ass too. <laughs> oh yeah, I totally forgot about that. That's yeah. so unfortunate. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yes, very, very unfortunate. That should be the number one issue on your damn Olympians list when you get voted in. Uh, I, I genuinely don't think there's anything high res can do about it except throw money at it. I mean, honestly, yeah. I mean they've said they're ready. So, yeah, Sony. They just need listening. someone to go over there and rip that twig out their ass. At this point, it's more like a tree trunk, though. Hey, if they agree to do it right away, I'll use Vaseline. If they don't agree right away, I'm just going to start grabbing and twisting. <laughs> this metaphor has gone downhill. <laughs> yes, it has. So, well, moving on. Uh, how about the rest of you plebs? Uh, Yuki, how can people get a hold of you? Well, you can find me on Twitter at YukiGaming22. Uh, there you can talk to me about, you know, dad's glorious rise from bronze. And, uh, you can, you, can, you can find me on PlayStation 4 for now at, uh, Ryukotse underscore Yuki. Hit me up. We'll play games. Uh, pass me some good insults for Dirt Nap's dad if you'd like. Um, I, this is my no, new thing is no, gonna no, make no, fun no, of him. No. I'm finally making it to gold like a big boy. No. We lost those matches. I, I, you know, I'm, I'm optimistic. I'm optimistic that within the next seven years, you'll make it to gold. Yeah, maybe this weekend. Maybe. 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 Dan, how can people get a hold of you, your, your butt? You can find me on Twitter at Split Push Podcast with no A, and you can find me on the PlayStation, sadly, at P, uh, Dirt X Nap X Dan. I want to change my PlayStation gamer tag to make pl- cross platform happen. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Guy? And you can find me on Twitter at G Smitey. You can find me on PlayStation at GuyAJ78. And you can find me on Xbox at Guy All Smitey. Bagel? Find me on Twitter at Beagle underscore girl 27. And you can find me on PS4 at Beagle underscore girl 2780. Make Spider. sure you let her know that you're you're getting a hold of her because you listen to her on the podcast. Otherwise, she'll ignore you. You can also find her in the yeah. corner wearing a cone of shame. <laughs> you can also find me sitting here in my room at 8 p.m. every Thursday watching Supernatural. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yes, you can. Mm-hmm. All right. Uh, so that leaves good old Dirt Naps Dad here. You can find me on the PlayStation and Twitter at Dirt underscore Naps underscore Dad. Uh, you know, you can join our Discord. Uh, you know, every week I'm seeing new faces in there. And, um, you know, actually I just, again, we've given a, you know, it's kind of, it was a joke the last couple of weekends for other things, but, uh, I just want to give a shout out to the community because every week now, I'm seeing new faces in the Discord. Oh, yeah, I'm big seeing time. new followers uh, and and mentions on Twitter and, and you know direct messages and and all kinds of stuff. And hey, look, we're doing this for you guys, you know, much more than for us. You know, again, I put a lot of time and effort into this because you know I'm not quite a perfectionist, but you know I don't want to put out a shitty product either. So you know, keep it up. We do this for you guys. So hey, enjoy it. Uh, you can email us at community at splitpushpodcast.com. And what else is there? Oh, you know, we got the Discord. I got the cats, you know, making noises while I'm trying to talk. <laughs> Damn felines. But um, yeah, I think that's it, right? Oh, Guy, uh, before we go, 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 who can people ask questions for? here oh, next right. week because actually week. we're recording with two people next week two different parts one for next week's episode and one for the week after no no right? no no we're no? Not. no 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 that no. Got, we just we changed okay the guest after that to the week we switched weeks is what we did okay. oh okay all right i wasn't quite sure what the hell was going on Ethan starts school the week after next so he had to do his episode this coming thursday and he's really busy with tournaments and stuff so uh that's who we're having on next week Jenkins. Oh, well, we've already been talking about them this week. So yes, we have. 
So, hey, if you got any questions for you old Jensen's, you know, hop into the guest questions section or uh, look us up on the old Twitterverse and, and let us know what you want us to ask. And guess what? We'll probably do it. Not, not guaranteed, but probably. Usually. Um, usually, yeah. Usually. As long as you're nice, you know. <laughs> so, yeah. Well, sometimes even if you're not. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you know, if you got the right angle, yeah, high five. If you but got the right otherwise, no, oh, yeah, that too, definitely. Uh, I do accept bribes, and um, you know, when it comes to dirt naps, you gotta give them before you take them, and you know, when all else fails, split push, split push, split push. Split push. Oh. It's a good thing oh, you guys were weak this week, <laughs> Murray. Can you can you tell God, these right. guys how to say split push? Split push. All right. So now, like, like, let's all do it together now. Once you hear that, you know, put some enthusiasm in it, people. I gotta feel like I'm at a morning meeting. All right. Hey, good morning. This all is right, our morning. Let's do it again. This basically is my morning. So <laughs> yeah. So all right. Well, when all else fails, what do you do? Split, Split push. push. <laughs> <laughs> is that better?